Good evening, everyone. Tonight I will tell you about a man. A man who saw things differently than others. Who thought differently than others. The master of suspense himself, Alfred Hitchcock. Let us begin. So, Hitchcock takes place around the time where the famous psychopath Ed Gein gets arrested. And, by the way, Ed Gein is the influence for the movies Science of the Lambs, The Texas Chainsaw Massacre, and, of course, if any of y'all guessed, Psycho. Well, also around this time, Alfred Hitchcock has finished his, one of his masterpieces, North by Northwest. And he's happy, and he's excited, and hardly any time goes by. And he's like, hey, I think I'm ready for another movie. And what's his influence for the next movie? Well, none other than the famous psychopath Ed Gein. And also the book based off of Ed Gein, Psycho. Ah. So Hitchcock picks up the book. He skims through it a couple of days, and he's like, hey, this ain't bad. This is going to be my next movie. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, everyone else is like, whoa, whoa, you can't make this book into a movie. It's too grotesque. And especially the fact that the main character dies within half of the film. This is idiotic. What are you thinking, Hitchcock? Well, this is where Hitchcock's famous ego comes into play. He's like, well, I'm Alfred Hitchcock. I'm the best. And it's going to be awesome, so screw you guys. Alright, so, since nobody's on board with him making this movie, nobody's funding him the money to make it. But he's like, you know what, that's okay. I'm just going to put out a loan on my house and my pool, and I'm going to make it myself with that money. Well, this is kind of where the loyalty is tested with his wife, because, you know, this is a crazy move. But she's got to stand by him, this is her husband and everything, but while this is all going on, she's doing her own project as well. So she's got to watch him and do her own project. So... While Hitchcock is doing his project and she's doing her project, their kind of their trust in the relationship really gets tested. Alfred's like, "Oh my gosh, what is she doing behind my back?" And then his wife is like, "Oh my gosh, what is he doing behind my back?" And it just gets tested and it gets challenged, and the stress on both of them affects both of their projects in negative ways. You see. So in plot conclusion, the film focuses on mostly. Hitchcock and his relationship with his wife versus what the trailer was focusing on which is Hitchcock and his creation of the, his greatest film ever, Psycho! Yeah! Alright, so I'm gonna get right into the fact that the film isn't isn't on what I thought it would be. It's on just, you know, what it's on mostly his relationship, which was disappointing to me. I thought it was going to be like the behind the scenes of Psycho and him putting that in everyone's face because nobody believed in him. It was like a triumphant, you know, uh, goal for him. And it, and it wasn't really focusing on that. It was just disappointing. I mean, the real story was fine. It was fine, but I just thought it could have been better if it would have stuck to what the trailer was putting out there. Also, I did a lot of research before I even saw the film. I researched Alfred Hitchcock. I researched how he spoke, how he moved, and the verdict is that Anthony Hopkins did an excellent job. He sounded just like him, moved just like him, and everything. But the movie projected him as kind of a, a stalker, if you will. You know, he'd look out the window, and he'd look at all these blondes, because that's what he liked. He liked the blondes. And even when he talked to one, he'd scan her up and down while she was talking to him. And even when he was talking to her, he'd be staring at her breast the whole time while talking to her. You know, and also, the, the film projected him as a little insane, because he would talk to himself all the time. And he would talk to his self-conscious, and his self-conscious was portrayed by... Ed Gein, the, the, the influence for Psycho and Sex Chainsaw Massacre. I mean, that's a little nutty. It gets, you know, with, with that a little insanity and his accent, it kind of reminded me of him playing Hannibal Lecter. You know, it was really driving my, my mind off the actual character he was trying to portray at times. But the most enjoyable part of the movie was the chemistry between Helen Mirren and Anthony Hopkins as man and wife. They were, they were very good together, they had each other's back, and they taught each other lessons and stuff like that, and their comments back and forth to each other were hilarious. It was a lot more hilarious than I thought it would actually be. It actually kept the movie on its feet, and it, mo it more of reminded you of kind of like a romantic comedy, kind of, yeah, a little bit, but 
other than that, it was pretty good. I mean, I thought it could have been better, but it was, I still liked it. Yeah, so the cunning review gives Hitchcock a 7.5 out of 10. I mean, it was funny, it was good, but it's just not what it could have been, you know? So now I have a question. What's your favorite Hitchcock movie? And if you don't have one because you might be too young, what's your favorite director? And now, thank you everyone for watching another episode of The Counting Review. Comment below to answer my question or tell me what you thought of the movie or tell me what you thought of my review. And if you like what you saw and you want to see more reviews or OMG WTF news, please subscribe and y'all have a good one.